Let's create a brand new project that will hopefully help you understand classes, attributes, and methods a little bit better. I'm going to create a new project, file, new project, and I'm going to call this project car demo, and I'll go ahead and click finish. It'll create that project for me. And then what I want to do is create a car class inside of this package also. So I'll go up to my package, right mouse click, choose new, Java class. And we'll call this class name car, and we'll put it in the car demo package. That means we're actually putting it in the same package or folder that the other file is in. If you don't put a package there, Java will give you a warning saying you really shouldn't put it in the default package. So it's probably wise to go ahead and choose a package. Click Finish, and it generates our new source code to create our car class. And what we want to do is add some attributes to this car. What describes the car? Well, we have maybe attributes like model, another one, make, uh, maybe an integer called miles per gallon, and uh, other things that might make it unique. Let's have another one. We'll call it um, LIC plate for the license plate. And we'll have string variables and integer variables. That actually creates the template or the mold so that we can create car objects. Now that we have that in place, we need to also think what else might a car need to do functionality wise. Remember, the attributes describe the class and the object we're creating from the class. And then we have methods. Methods do work, and they're really describing the functionality or the dynamic behavior of a class. Things we might want to do in a car, uh, we'll just list them out, and we'll just say maybe a car will want to brake, and we'll also want a car to go. Um, maybe another thing we want to do with our car is um, get the actual speed of the car. Those are all functional things that we're doing with the car. And since it's functional, we can actually write source code in that, that's logically organized to do that functionality. And we call those methods. Now, when you write a method, what you have to first specify is, what does this method give back? In other words, if you call the method, whoever calls it, we call the caller, are they expecting something to come back? Like if you push the brake on a car, are we expecting the car to do something back to our foot that's touching the brake pedal. For the most part, we don't. We just want it to do some work. We want it to, to slow the speed of the car down. So the first piece of creating a method is what does it give back? If it's not giving anything back, we say the word void. And then you have the method name. The method can receive data that it can work with. We call that parameters. And it's associated with anything that would be inside the parentheses. In this case, there's nothing inside the parentheses, so we say we're not receiving any data. And then what we could actually do is we need to slow down the speed of the car. Well, if you notice, up here in our data structure for our class, we don't have anything that says what is the speed. So let's go ahead and add another uh, attribute to the class. We'll just call it speed and make it of type integer. So on the brake, what we want to do is if they put the brake on the car, if they push it, we want to decrease the speed every time they push it by one mile per hour. So how would we do that? Well, the data is stored in the speed attribute. So you could simply say speed equals speed minus one. That says if you ever call this method, we're going to go to the speed attribute, grab the current speed, subtract it by one, and store it back to the speed attribute. And then we're not giving anything back to whoever calls us. We can apply that same concept to the go method. If we push our foot on the accelerator, the gas pedal, we want to increase our speed. And our foot's not going to receive anything back for pushing on it. So we'll say void. We're not giving anything back. Go. And then we actually want to take our speed of the car and add one to it. 
So as long as they hold the foot down on the gas, we're going to increase the speed. Or in other words, as long as the caller calls the go method, we will increase the speed of the car by one and store it back to the attribute of the car. The next method we have that we want to write is called get speed. In other words, return the current speed of the car back to whoever needs it. The speed of the car is demonstrated through the variable, the instance variable called speed, which is of type integer. So if somebody wants to know how fast the car is going, they're going to receive an integer value back. So in this case, instead of saying void, we say int get speed. And you just simply have to put the word return and then whatever you want to return. We're returning the speed of the car. So whoever calls it will know the value stored in the attribute speed and it will come back as an integer value. So how can we actually work with this class now? We need to go back to the car demo.java file. And in that program, we're going to actually create a variable. That variable will be of type car. We'll call it ocar. And we'll go ahead and say new car parenthesis parenthesis. Let me break this statement down for you. First of all, the word ocar is simply a variable name, or in other words, a memory location. We're saying that, that we need the system to create a memory location. We'll refer to that memory location through the word ocar. Someday, it will hold a car object. The equal sign says we want to assign something to this variable. The new keyword says we want to go create a new object. This says we want to call the constructor for the class, which is like a method that does work, but it has the same name as the class. And I know it's a method because of the parenthesis parenthesis. So we call the constructor, whose job it is, to put plastic into a mold to create something. In this case, we're going to create a car object by calling the constructor. And we're going, we are going to assign that to the variable called ocar. By the time this statement is done, ocar has an object in it of type car, meaning it now has access to all of these instance variables, or sorry, all of these attributes, and all of these methods. So I could now come back over here, and we could load up that data by getting input from the user, or I could just simply assign it. I could say ocar dot make equals Honda ocar dot model equals pilot ocar dot miles per gallon equals 20. While we're here, let's go ahead and set the speed of the car since it's brand new. to be 0. We've now created a car object, and we've loaded up some of the instance variables from the class. If you look at the class, if you notice, I haven't loaded up every attribute of the class. You don't have to. The attributes simply say these are all the different things that could describe the car, and maybe not all of them have values. Now that I've loaded up the attribute or the data for the object so that, that it describes it, I could even call some of the methods. Ocar dot go. That should increase the speed of the car by one. I could put that in a loop even. For int I count equals zero. I count less than ten. I count plus plus. That will call the method go 10 times, which will increase the speed of the car by 1 10 times. I could then print out whatever that returns by saying system.out.println, the object name, dot, and I could access the getSpeed method. 
This says, now go out to the object, call the method getSpeed, and whatever it returns, we want to print it out. Well, let's go look at the class. What does it return? GetSpeed actually returns whatever is in the speed instance variable. And it must be as an integer. So when we come back, we look at it. I wonder what that returns. Let's go ahead and run our program and take a look. The value of 10. 10 is the speed of the car. And the reason it's 10 is because in my for loop, I accelerated 10 times, which when you look at the class means that you've increased the speed by 10 and then we said return the speed back. Now we're just printing it out but maybe in a real car what it does is it returns this value back to the speedometer and increments what the speedometer should say. We could also do this for int i count equals 0 as long as i count is less than 5 I count plus plus, and we could say we want to press the brake of the car. Make sure you put the parenthesis parenthesis because that means you're working with the method. And then once again, I could go ahead and print out the speed of the car. Let's run that and see what we sh we we see for the output. We've accelerated ten, ten times. We've decelerated five times. So as you can see, when you create a class, you're specifying the structure of the class or the attributes which describe the object that gets created from the class. And then you can also describe or specify what functionality the class can do. If the functionality doesn't need to give anything back to whoever calls it, we say that method is void. If the functionality needs to return something back, to the caller, then you have to specify the return type and make sure that the return type matches whatever you're returning. This will be part one of understanding a method and classes and look for part two.